Welcome to this lesson on how to add SODs and adding SODs is a little bit like adding like terms in algebra and you can only add SODs that are like SODs and like SODs are ones like these. It doesn't really matter what the number in front of them is. The key thing is the number under the square root so root 3 and root 3 means that 2 root 3 and 4 root 3 are like SODs and all you have to do is this. This is really like uh, you keep the like third and just add the numbers in front of the third. So 2 plus 4 is 6, and so that means 2 root 3 plus 4 root 3 is 6 root 3. And that's the answer. In this example here, 6 root 2 minus 8 root 2. Like thirds again because of the root 2 and root 2. So it's really uh, 6 minus 8 is minus 2. And so what you have there is minus two lots of root two. In this third example, there's two different like thirds. So there's the root two thirds, four root two, and minus five root two, and then two root three and minus four root three. So key thing here is uh, if you're going to group them together, which you can do, four root two, minus five root two, and remember the sign in front of a term stays with that term wherever you move it and then plus 2 root 3, minus 4 root 3, and now just working them out. So 4 root 2 minus 5 root 2 is minus 1 root 2, and then plus 2 root 3 minus 4 root 3 is minus 2 root 3. And then you don't have to write this 1 in front of the third, so it can be written as minus root 2 minus 2 root 3. It's not wrong to write your answer with a, a 1 in front of a third like that. It's a little bit like writing 1x in algebra, like 1x is equal to x. And normally you would write x as your answer, not 1x, although 1x would be perfectly correct. So that's really how you add and subtract thirds. They have to be like thirds to start with, and uh, that's what these ones are in, this, in these three examples. So the next set of examples I'm going to look at uh, thirds that you have to simplify first before adding and subtracting. Okay, so in this example, root 8 plus root 50, they're definitely not like thirds. So what you have to do is simplify them first and then see if you can add them together. So root 8, uh, the biggest perfect square from the list of perfect squares uh, that goes into 8 is 4. And so 4 times 2 equals 8 plus and then again, the biggest perfect square from your list of perfect squares that goes into 50 is 25. And so 50 is equal to 25 times 2. And then the next step is to separate the thirds. So root 4 times root 2, and then plus root 25 times root 2. And if you always put the number that comes from your list of perfect squares, the number that is a perfect square first, then the first third that you get when you've split them up will always be the one that has an answer to it or, or an exact square root. So the square root of 4 is 2, so this becomes 2 root 2, and then the square root of 25 is 5, and so that becomes 5 times root 2. So then that becomes 2 root 2 plus 5 root 2, and now, being like thirds, or they were like thirds up in this step here, but simplifying them to a point where it's a bit easier to add them. So 2 root 2 plus 5 root 2 is equal to 2 plus 5 is 7, so it just becomes 7 root 2. So that's what you've got to do to thirds like this. You've got to simplify them first uh, by using your list of perfect squares, and then if you end up with like thirds, then you can simplify them further, as I've done in this example. I'll do one more example. Okay, in this example, again, you have to simplify the thirds because none of them are like thirds, and they all can be simplified. So this first one, 2, and then 20 is equal to 4 times 5, and 4 being the biggest perfect square from the list of perfect squares that goes into 20, minus 3, and then 12 is equal to 4 times 3. Once again, 4 going into 12, minus 4 root and the biggest number from the list of perfect squares that goes into 45 is 9. 9 times 5. And then the last 
so two root and the biggest number that goes into 48 from the list is 16 so that becomes 16 times 3 and then now that becomes 2 times root 4 times root 5 minus 3 times root 4 times root 3 minus 4 times root 9 times root 5 plus 2 root 16. I can put the times in. don't have to actually put that times in. So just on that one I won't. So 2 root 16 times root 3 and then 2 times and then the square root of 4 is 2 times root 5. You can just write the 5 like that. 2 root 5 means 2, root, two times root 5 minus 3 times 2 root 3 minus 4 times square root of 9 is 3 root 5 plus 2 times square root of 16 is 4 times root 3. Let's write that in. So I've done all of these a little bit differently for each one just to show you. It doesn't matter which way you, you actually uh, do this step to this step. So 2 times 2 is 4 root 5 or 4 times root 5. I'm going to write it as 4 root 5. 3 times 2 is 6, so that's 6 root 3. Minus 4 3 is 12 root 5. And then plus 2 times 4 is 8 root 3. And now, like thirds, you have 4 root 5 minus 12 root 5. 4 root 5 minus 12 root 5. That's equal to minus 8 root 5. Now remember 4 root 5 minus 12 root 5, it's not this minus I'm doing, it's this one here. It's always the sign in directly in front of a term that tells you what to do with it. So 4 root 5 and then minus 12 root 5. And then minus 6 root 3 plus 8 root, root 3 is equal to 2 root 3, which is positive. So plus 2 root 3 and that's the answer to that sum. So there's a lot of working out in this type of sum. You can shortcut a couple of steps. But the key thing you've got to do when you don't start with like thirds is you have to simplify them using your list of numbers, uh, your list of numbers that are perfect squares. And so that's about it for this lesson on how to add and subtract thirds. And I'll see you in the next one.